Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. But Wednesday, President Buhari paid an official visit to Lagos State to commission an ultra modern 170 bed obstetrics and gynecology maternity hospital at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, the Oshodi Transport Interchange, 820 mass transit buses, a 10 lane road leading to the Motala Mohammed International Airport and the Lagos Theater House. There was a lot of controversy surrounding the commissioning, which caused a divide, with many saying unfinished projects should not be commissioned. Joining us this morning to speak on the Lagos State Government side of this divide is the Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, and former Commissioner for Information, Steve Ayori. Steve, you are welcome to the morning show. Thank you. Good to, have Good to be you. here. Good morning. Straight away. <laughs> the president came to town Correct. with a lot of celebration. Well, as, as expected. Now, after the commission in this controversy, that the president has come again to commission on completed pro projects. Because the last time the president came to uh, commission a project in Lagos State, the Keja bus terminal. And then by the time he returned, that terminal had not been put into use. So why commissioning on completed projects? Uh, the president didn't come to commission on completed projects. Uh, he came to commission um, a different components of major legacy projects in Lagos State. Uh, and they are projects that are ready for use by Lagosians. Uh, I in chaos as we speak, you know, now has uh, patients that are being attended to. That is the biggest uh, child-making factory, if you like, in the country. Almost 200, you know, a bed um, a hospital um, is ready. Uh, and you know that it's been abandoned for practically almost seven to eight years now. Uh, it's working. IK House is working. Um, the Lagos Theatre Oregon that was commissioned is fully ready. It's part of the four out of the six that the governor projected that he was going to build. Uh, so what, uh, what that means is that in four years, or in two years of the actual uh, project, he has delivered on four, 400 seater, seater uh, theaters, and they are all ready. Uh, the president has commissioned it. It means that every weekend from um, basically next weekend, you, know, you can have activities you know, going on there. Uh, the airport road, of course, is one of the biggest, you know, of, of the project. Um, what is not completed there, uh, the governor clearly stated uh, where we were. And don't forget the fact that um, uh, originally we had expected that the president would come uh, in the middle of May uh, to commission uh, most of this project. Uh, it turns out that uh, the entire May will be the, the month of Ramadan and the president's activity will be uh, largely limited. And um, another date was chosen, which actually will have been today and tomorrow, 29th and 30th you know, of April. But again, it turned out that the president uh, would need to travel to the UK, and we were asked to uh, bring the date forward to last Wednesday, 24th. Uh, but because the projects are you know, basically ready, and the governor had outlined, as a matter of fact, even the contractors themselves, uh, because I recall that uh, the gentleman who handled the issue of the interchange took journalists round so that they could be familiar with the level of work uh, at the interchange. There are three terminals there. Uh, one will be ready, as the governor said, for use from the 1st of May, and the other two will be ready uh, before the end of May. Um, as you know, all over the world, uh, commissioning a project is just a ceremonial component of the project itself. Um, there are projects that you wouldn't even need to commission and people will just see that, you know, they're ready. Take um, uh, the International Airport Road, for, for example. The moment the uh, asphalt had been laid and, and the road became motorable, um, people had started using it. We didn't have to close uh, the International Airport Road uh, forever. As a matter of fact, there was no time that we closed it. We were just managing, you know, fixing one road after the other, et cetera. But because there are at least two major components of the International Airport Road, uh, the U-turn,
by seven and eight bus stop, which is a major, major innovation. Uh, Forty years after that road was built, uh, if you need, if you're coming from, say, Ajao Estate, for example, and you need to go back towards uh, the airport before, before now, you, need, you, you needed to go all the way down to Oshudi. So to now turn. go and turn to turn. Mm -hmm. uh, so what uh, that road now has as part of the component is that major you know, uh, U-turn uh, uh, divide, which had to be commissioned and open. And then another component of it you know, are the two flyover bridges over NACO, you know, uh, leading you to and fro uh, at the international airport. Um, one leg of, of the bridge was not fully ready uh, by the 24th. But of course, the road, you know, is ready. The road is being used. Uh, at night, you could see the, all the lights, and people have been, you know, talking about it, that this is something fantastic. So if you remove, for me, if you remove uh, the political undertone, you know, uh, that characterized the thing, I won't see that as a controversy in any way. Uh, I will say that the president has done something very fantastic for Lagosians. Uh, we needed to consider his own timing, and, and, and we needed to change mm. to 24th of April in difference uh, to the exigencies of time oh. of the president. Unfortunately, you cannot remove the political undertone in all of this because of the build-up. I agree. Uh, you know what happened in the APC, the primaries in the state. As some would say, you know, Governor Ambody projected that sense of urgency, like he wanted to impress President Muhammad Buhari. And you have rightly said, uh, some projects don't need commissioning before they're used. At all. And it's actually the ceremonial part of it. Mm -hmm. But we have also seen that some projects, even after commissioned, are mm -hmm. not used, like the bus terminal uh, Emmanuel referred to earlier. In mm -hmm. Oshodi, that got the president commissioned. But the bus terminal hasn't got anything to do with being ready or not. Uh, the bus terminal um, is just one of the about a dozen terminals mm. that have to be in place before the overall uh, bus reform so, project so is. So is. indeed, uh, and I was coming to my question. Uh, and what I'm trying to say, therefore, is that uh, whether uh, the president had commissioned the bus terminal or not, mm. the bus terminal, the Kedja one, like the, all the other ones that are now ready, will still have needed to wait for the buses that will you know, go exactly. on them, you know, to be ready. Exactly. So and now you have 820 buses. Uh -huh. Do you get I, I get you. Yes. But, but this is my question. So why the hurry? And that's why the political undertone comes in, because, you know, they for, say... Hurry, hurry for which one? Government is continuing for all the projects, really. Yeah. Uh, for, especially for the ones that are uncompleted. Government, I, I, they could I do have not see any uncompleted... I, I don't see any uncompleted project. All the projects are ready for use, especially now. And, and the bus terminal that was commissioned last year mm -hmm. was ready at the time that it was commissioned. But it's still not in use. But, but now it's in use because the buses are there. Okay, still on the political undertone. Um, at least a dozen commissioners mm -hmm. did not attend that ceremony. I was reading a report mm -hmm. to that effect. Yeah. The leader of APC, former governor of Lagos State, was not there. The Minister of Works, and that happens to be a federal road the state government uh, just took over and uh, refurbished to um, admirable standard, if, if I may add. And the Minister of Works was not there. This, uh, was the governor not worried that these are all indigents of Lagos occupying top federal positions, and they did not seem to to bother whether the president is in town to commission such uh, projects, a project of such magnitude? Um, I, I think, Emmanuel, that would be a, a very inaccurate assessment of what has happened. It's got nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with political undertone, that a few people uh, were not able to make it. And, and I think we shouldn't read meanings into what has happened, more so that um, the principal players, particularly uh, Ashwa Jibola and Metinubu, which are, who I believe you're trying to refer to, uh, and uh, Honorable Minister uh, uh, Mr. Fashola. Um, Arise TV is a sister company to this day, and this day I just published this morning, you know, the reaction of uh, uh, former Governor Fashola on why he was not able to make it. And he did confirm uh, that not only was he invited, but he also got a direct personal invitation uh, from His Excellency the Governor, Governor Akimi Ambodi. But I, that, yeah, even though he, he promised that he was going to be there, but on a second thought, he felt that he shouldn't share in the glory with the governor. This is what this, they published this morning. 
uh, and that he felt, he, as a matter of fact, he used an example of uh, Obama and Bush, you know, when uh, uh, Osama bin Laden you know, was killed. And he said that uh, he just felt that let, gov let Governor Ambody, you know, uh, enjoy his day, let him shine the glory. Uh, he believed that something major, mag you know, magnificent has been done, you know, to negotiate. It's Governor Ambody's show. But don't also forget the fact that uh, the incoming governor, uh, Mr. Babashide Sowolu, and his deputy were there. And they made a promise that they will continue with the project that the governor is doing. They will expand on it. And if there are areas that are not complete, they will finish it. Uh, Ashwa Jubala Ametinu, with the leader of the party, has also spoken. Uh, everybody knows that he's not in town. Uh, he's abroad. And his plan was that uh, the commissionings were going to take place, as I said to you earlier, today and tomorrow, 29th and 30th. Uh, I, I, I suppose it was difficult for him at that point to change his time. Even for us uh, in the cabinet and a few other people who were on the committee, uh, it was a race against time because, as I said, uh, the new date was in difference to uh, what the president wanted. And because, and, and you know how things work, uh, the president will not come and commission a project that didn't get the pass mark of the Abuja team. And when I'm talking about the Abuja team, we're not saying one, two, three persons. People of knowledge will come in droves to have an assessment of where you are, how far the projects have gone. And they did say that, they, you know, everything was satisfactory and they were ready for the president to commission it. So there was not a case of uh, anybody trying to impress anybody. Uh, and then you mentioned uh, about 12 uh, commissioners who are not there. Oh, you are now calculating that out of 40 member cabinet or 30 something or 20 something attended. I don't think that um, that's necessary. Um, this is a government that is winding down just about a month to go. Uh, at this point in time, people are free to uh, be on vacation. There are a number of our colleagues that are on vacation. I'm supposed to be on vacation actually too, you know, but it's just that I have not traveled. Uh, people could be on medical recess. Different things, and, and, and I do not. This is this is something that you wouldn't say to uh, the quarterly town hall meetings that we used to have. If you didn't see five or ten or fifteen members of cabinet there, it wouldn't be an issue. It wouldn't be an issue because, frankly speaking, you do not all have to be uh, at an event at the same time. But a good chunk of the cabinet was there. Uh, KBC was there. And people were happy that the president came to validate the fact that this is a performing, performing governor who has done so much in four years for negotiations. I don't think we should read any other uh, meanings into what has happened. Okay, we can't talk about this. We have an explanation for your absence. The absence. I'm saying that. High profile. I'm absence. saying that even no, the two, even the two key people, <laughs> I've already explained before no, I so came. I think we have an explanation for the absence. And I think they're genuine explanations. Well, <laughs> Let's talk about that. I mean, this is for ceremony as well. We we'll take that. But let's talk about the working relationship between Governor Ambade and his commissioners in the last three and a half years. Yes. How would you describe it? Because a lot are said to be lame ducks, except for a few ministries like yours that seem to be active. Others are said to be you know, frustrated by the high-handedness of the governor. How would you describe the relationship between Governor Ambade and his commissioners? I've never had that. I do not think that is correct. I've never read that anywhere. Uh, but again, it depends on who you're listening to. Uh, if we base all our assessments on social media runs, uh, then we, uh, we may be very hasty in our judgment and, and um, analysis of what is happening in government. Uh, I think that the Lagos State Esco has a very robust relationship. Uh, the governor uh, enjoys cordial relationship with uh, everybody. Uh, and whatever must have happened, before, during, and after the primaries, it is obvious now that everybody is working together. Everybody did work together to ensure that uh, the candidate of the party was delivered. The governor um, delivered his constituency, his local government in Nekwe, you know, convincingly. Uh, and everybody worked together. Everybody was mobilized. Everybody was encouraged to ensure that APC retains Lagos because that is what is good for Lagos. Uh, I do not think that we should return to... Uh, the uninformed era of a few months ago that people, in order to justify certain things, you know, uh, made uh, a few comments uh, that were not accurate, that were not helpful, that were not healthy. Uh, but we have gone past that. Uh, it's one house, 
and we believe that one house stays strong. Uh, that is what we have in Lagos APC. That is what we have, we have in the Lagos State Esco. It is one house. Well, um, still on the Esco, uh, in the run-up to that uh, party primaries, there was also the report that his commissioners were not backing him. And um, because if you juxtapose that with the fact that uh, of this report of his high-handedness, whether that could have been responsible for his commissioners not backing him ahead of the party primaries. I'm not uh, very inclined to discuss um, or revisit the issues that led to the primaries. I don't think it's useful. I don't think it is helpful. I don't think we need it. Uh, I think what is important is that every member of the Lagos State Esco is happy to identify with the successes that have been recorded by Lagos State Governor. The last time uh, that a government that spent um, four years had this sort of impact was during uh, Alaji Kaudi Jakonde, who spent four years and three months. And everybody that worked with Alaji Jakonde at that time is proud up till today to say that I was part of that cabinet, I was part of that government that delivered so much uh, for Lagos State uh, during a very short period. Now, Governor Akimiambodi has had uh, four impactful years uh, to demonstrate his belief in Lagos State and the Lagos Project. And I believe that everybody that has had any cause to work you know, with him and for him, either as cabinet members or assessors or essays or advisors or GMs or permanent secretaries, will be very happy about, because they share, they align wholeheartedly with the summation of the president about the fact that this governor has done very well. And not only has he done very well in terms of infrastructural development, even in terms of his large heart, you know, considering the fact that, yes, he wanted a second term, uh, but the party chose um, uh, to present another person. But he stayed in the party to demonstrate loyalty, to demonstrate commitment, to, to show uh, that he's a people person. And then he, did, he worked for uh, the candidate of the party. And then he's saying that he will not just sit down and fold his hands that all the project that he has set out to do, he will complete and finish strong. And I believe that because the president is saying what everybody sees, uh, everybody that has had the opportunity to, to work with him will be proud that they were part of the 2015-2019 class of the Lagos State Executive Council member. So much successes have been recorded across board, infrastructurally speaking, in tourism, in housing, uh, in works, in sports. So it will not be fair and correct to say that just a few people or a few ministries. I don't think so. I mean, look at sports, for example. In another major uh, um, uh, project will soon be commissioned, the Unicorn. Is it know, completed? It's almost done. Okay. It will be done before the governor leaves. Will it be leaves. commissioned, completed? Absolutely, before the governor leaves. Okay. Or in phase. <laughs> Sorry? Or uncompleted. <laughs> no, the point is, why don't we just check it out? Okay. I mean, I've seen... It's just around the corner. Before... Absolutely, so <laughs> go check it out. Before we talk about tourism, you've talked about uh, how Governor Ambade has performed exceedingly well, well, from what I hear you say. But what would you say is his greatest achievement so far as the governor of Lagos State? Landmark legacy projects for me. Mm. Um, Coming at a time, if you recall, uh, that in 2015 and all of 2016, when he became governor, um, more than half of the states in Nigeria were struggling. There was recession. And at that time, uh, to have somebody like him, who is an astute manager of resources, you know, I believe was what uh, Lagos State government, you know, Lagos State in general, you know, needed. And you recall what the vice president said at a time, that Lagos and Kano essentially contributed to ensuring that you know, Nigeria pulled out of a recession. And, you, and that has been validated now from the uh, latest report that, was, that came out on, on Friday rate. on employment thing, you know, to say that close to 800,000 new jobs between 2017 and 2018 were created in Lagos State, the highest in the country, but of course, which also showed that you have a competent manager of resources and of money at the time uh, that Lagos State is recording you know, that success, which shouldn't be something to struggle with if you consider the antecedent of the governor, uh, who was the accountant general, 
uh, during the flowing from Ashwaju's time, you know, to Fashola's time, uh, when Lagos State was denied, you know, its, it's um, funding for local government, uh, somebody was like the brain box who sat, worked with the finance commissioner, worked with the governor to ensure that Lagos State didn't suffer. So the things that you see today uh, moving IGR from power tree 600 million naira as at that time to 6 billion, growing all the way down to 10 to 15 to 20 and up to 30 billion monthly in Lagos State now is because you have as governor today somebody who was in the engine room, you know, in those days of, of, of the locals, you know, when things were, t were tight. So I would say that uh, the manner in which the resources of the state has been managed is key. And again, uh, consider what the governor revealed recently about the fact that when people say that, oh, Lagos State has the highest number, uh, the highest amount of uh, foreign loans, you know, by any state in Nigeria, which will be correct, which is also something not strange because you need to borrow for development. But guess what? Not a single dime has been borrowed under, under somebody in the last four years, you know, uh, 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 as international loan, which means that you have somebody who understands how money works, who understands, you know, economy, who understands development. And this is why you've seen what he has used the resources of the state for uh, in terms of the large infrastructure development, you know, cutting across different sectors. And in chaos that we mentioned, you know, that was commissioned, um, has been there, you know, line follow for seven, eight years. Now it's back. Um, four theaters in two years. It's back. Uh, the airport, International Airport Road, was constructed in, 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 in 1979. 40 years after, now you have a governor, federal road, now you have a governor who has spent Lagos State's money, taxpayers' money, to fix it into a 10-lane, you know, road. I, I would say that um, competent management of resources and, of course, infrastructure development. But I shouldn't forget, because of my own personal interest, because this is an art-loving governor, I think that the arts community, the creative sector uh, of Lagos State, will not forget this governor in a hurry. Yes, um... You've always talked about uh, making Lagos the entertainment capital of Africa. Are you sure we're very... Definitely. Are we close to validating that appellation? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. We're the entertainment capital. You know, we're not just close to it. We're there. We do not want to leave, you know, that honor. Uh, the profile of Lagos State is that of a happening state. It is a call for show. Uh, and as Banky W will say, uh, in no party like the Lagos party. Uh, we do not say that loosely. It's not just entertainment. It is not just uh, showbiz. It is, there's a business component of show, you know, in what Lagos State is doing. And you will see that years before now, you would describe Lagos uh, as the birthplace of Nollywood, as the home of Afrobeat. But then a governor came on board who saw the need to harness all the resources together. First, making sure that uh, the supervising ministry that would deal with all these vagaries um, has no um, uh, distractions. And therefore, the focus, unlike before, should be tourism, should be arts, should be culture. He got that, you know, uh, 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 correctly. Uh, and then, for the first time in the history of this country, a governor has given, you know, is bequeathing to his successor uh, the Lagos State Tourism Master Plan which is the needed blueprint and document uh, for the next 15 to 20 years on what we need to do, on the areas of investments that are needed, on how we will grow the economy, you know, using the creative sector. So for me, I think that so much is happening. And how do you validate, you know, the fact that even from outside, people now acknowledge the fact that Lagos State is the place to be as far as entertainment is concerned. I'll give you two quick examples. Um, Daily, Daily Mail of, of, of London mm -hmm. in April 2018 said that Lagos and Nairobi ranked highest uh, in the search engine research of British who were looking for holiday places outside of Europe. If they didn't think that there was something that, you know, that they could enjoy in Lagos State, they would not be searching and say, how do I visit Lagos? When I come, where do I go? Where do I visit? Etc. It's because the ecosystem, the tourism ecosystem, you know, has developed, is expanding, and is attractive, you know, to the international people. Secondly, MasterCard does a yearly ranking of footfalls of visitors uh, to cities, same in September, October 2018, and came up with the fact that Lagos recorded the highest number of visitors 
African sub, you know, uh, sub-Saharan Africa in 2018. That's Mastercard's report, you know, report, which simply means, yes, you could argue that, oh, they're not just tourists. They come for businesses, they come for conferences, they come for medicals, they come for spiritual tourism. Mm. But you know what we do at Lagos Tourism? We simply turn every visitor in, into Lagos into tourists. Mm. So we say that whether you've got 24 hours to spend, or 48 hours, or a week, or you are just stopping over to attend a wedding in Beni or to attend a conference in, in Abuja, uh, the 24 hours or 48 that you spend in Lagos, we want to turn you into a tourist. So we like the fact that MasterCard is saying that the footfall in Africa, mm. Sub-Saharan Africa, recorded the highest in Lagos you know, uh, in, in, in 2018. That's a major way to measure the fact that something is happening. And when people come, the beauty of it now is that they have places to go. They have things to see. Because every year by January, our ministry gives to, to reporters, to journalists, to researchers, to tour operators, a calendar of activities of what they should see, where they should go, you know, and, and we take everybody, we bring everybody on board, we take everybody as partners so that whether you are hoteliers, whether you are into aviation, whether you are tour operators, whether you are tour guide, guides, etc., we are saying that let's work together. And we also work in unison uh, with the Tourism Corporation Development, you know, board in Abuja, you know, just to, so that we don't work in silos. Yes, we are selling Lagos because everything happens, starts and ends in Lagos, but then we are part you know, of a big, huge, successful country that we need to showcase to the world Indeed. more positively. Indeed. One can understand why you're the Commissioner for Tourism in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you make this sustainable and profitable? You talked about the statistics from 2018. We also had the Global Livability Index in 2018 by the EIU and World Bank yeah. that says Lagos is one of the, is the third worst place to stay in the world. And then recently we had the traffic... Uh, uh, research done on yes. Lagos. It says Lagosians spend three out of every ten years on the road in traffic. Yes. I mean, you cannot have all of this and, you know, talk about a booming uh, tourism sector in yes. Lagos. How are you turning this, how are you making it sustainable and profitable for the state? I, I think we shouldn't dwell uh, too much uh, about, you know, the sort of rankings that every year they rank the same cities. They're not ranking every city. They have a standard 100, 120 cities that they rank. For us, for the fact that Lagos comes up in every ranking, shows that this is the city in West Africa. I do not see any other. Um, and then when they say it's the, it's the third whatever, uh, they're basically saying of all the cities that they have ranked. And guess what? Uh, livability is subjective. You won't find in the top 10 of livability ranking big, successful cities where businesses you know, thrive. Right. You won't find New York there. You won't find London there. You won't find Paris there. Uh, not because they are, not, uh, you know that Paris, London, they, they attract the highest number of people. Yes. But because by the very nature of big um, urban cities, uh, they're not, they won't compare with your Brisbane, with your, you know, uh, remote cities in Canada where mm -hmm. people go and retire and just go and chill, you know, and, and you consider those cities to be more livable. Uh, but, of course, we won't say that because uh, there are issues that to deal with. We will have to deal with them. Traffic is part of a 21, 23 million, you know, city people, uh, as it is in New York, as it is in London. Uh, part of what we therefore need is to make, first and foremost, our city resilient, which, is the, which was the reason why Lagos is now ranked. It's now in the 100 uh, resilient cities of the world. Because, yes, the challenges of, of, of modern living, of urbanization, of big, huge Mega cities will always be there, but be resilient. Resilience, it is in the nature of being resilient that a Lagos state governor, who is a smart governor, says, yes, I've got a federal road that leads to, the, to the airport, which has never been touched, you know, 40 years after it was constructed. That's the gateway into Nigeria. That's the gateway into the busiest city from the busiest, busiest airport in West Africa. Let me fix it. That's been resilient. That's been trying to make the city more livable. Mm -hmm. So it is our uh, duty, therefore, to take advantage of the resources that we have to make life a lot easier. And the beauty of, for example, the beauty of what President uh, Muhammadu Buhari did for Lagos State on Wednesday is that practically every component that he touched in commissioning has a telling positive effect on tourism, mm -hmm. on the image of the city. So the mere fact that we fixed that road we are constructing the biggest uh, 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 interchange in Africa, 
we are changing the profile of how people move, you know, using the bus system. It has a telling effect on tourism, on how people come here and commute, on how people come here and leave. And people will love to have to make their choices anyway. Uh, if you go to South Africa, if you want to stay in Joburg, you know that Joburg, I mean, that's practically one of the, in quotes, I'm sorry, deadliest cities in the world. But more people go to Joburg than they go to St. Elizabeth or to Cape Town, you know, because the businesses are there, you know, money is there, opportunities are there, but then also still strive to make it livable and give people the things that they can enjoy uh, as far as entertainment is concerned, as far as the creative economy is concerned. That is the sort of a city that we want for Lagos, a city like Mumbai, a city like you know, Rio or Sao Paulo, huge population, but huge opportunities. Challenges, yes, no doubt, but of course opportunities and, and the resilience to withstand those challenges. Okay, still on uh, arts and culture. You've been in arts and culture long before, <laughs> before government. Yeah. Now, two iconic uh, cultural landmarks in Lagos, the National Theatre, yes. the National Museum. Mm. Uh, at the beginning of this administration, there was the expectation yes. that perhaps the Ambody administration will do something uh, about these two iconic uh, landmarks in Lagos, yes. the National Theatre and uh, the National Museum. How yes. come this is not part of your focus after four years? Uh, indeed it was. Uh, and it was not just the National Theatre and the National Museum. The National Stadium, as a matter of fact, was also part of that consideration. Uh, but don't forget the fact that these are federal facilities. Um, uh, thankfully, uh, the Honorable Minister for Information, Tourism and Culture, Alajilai Mohamed, who is also a Lagosian, uh, wanted a deeper kind of partnership uh, with Lagos State to turn the fortunes of those two institutions around, the National Theatre and the National uh, Museum, the same way that um, uh, Minister you know, Dalong wanted Lagos State to also uh, work with the federal government in turning the uh, fortunes of the National Stadium around. Um, regrettably, uh, the plans didn't quite work out the way that uh, 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 we wanted it, uh, which in a way is the reason why rather than dissipate energy on something that might take a long time, you know, for the old ideas and, you know, uh, processes to coalesce, uh, what we did therefore uh, in the area of sports, you know, first and foremost, National Stadium is not working at the pace that we wanted, but then we felt that we could turn around Oniko Stadium, which is why the old thing now is being rebuilt, not just as a football pitch, but as a sporting entertainment center, so that by the end of May, when it's finally ready, you'll be proud of the vision behind, you know, why that, that space needed to be turned around. Same thing goes for uh, the National uh, Theater, which we wanted to work with the federal government, you know, on. I, I mean, you recall that the the uh, main arena of National Theatre, a 3,500 seater, has not been in use uh, since 1992 when two people died while watching uh, Ogunde's film, Aie. Uh, and of course, the environment is not the best, as, you, as, as, as we could see. But again, um, the pace at which the sort of agreements and partnership that uh, Lagos State wanted you know, was going um, was not very satisfactory. And then rather than, as I said earlier, um, dissipate energy and waste so much time waiting for uh, these things to come together, we felt that, um, yes, it would be nice to have a 3,000, 4,000-seater national theater. Mm. But, of, but of course, our communities, the regions and, and the divisions in Lagos State also require you know, um, their own spaces, art spaces to work with. So it, it, the failure in quote to get National Theatre working, as a matter of fact, is what has led to the four theatres that we have now in Badagri, another one in Nepe, another one in Igodo, to serve the largest local government area in Nigeria, Alimosho, and then another one uh, in Ikeja, in Oregon. So yes, there were considerations to work on those things, but again, it didn't work, but we didn't we didn't lose interest. We said, let us channel it. So in any case, you are not going to, it's not likely uh, that you have people 
come from Ikorodu, come from Badagri, to come and see a show at the National Theatre. Why don't you take the National in quotes this time around, the Lagos Theatre, you know, to those people in all those divisions? And that's what we have done in two years. You mentioned the issue of museum. Same thing applies, uh, and you recall that the reason why uh, Nigeria was not able to take advantage of um, an assistance from Ford Foundation as at that time was because the country, and not under this regime, in the previous regime administration, was not able to put down its own counterpart funding uh, for what you know, Ford, Ford, uh, Ford Foundation and the World Bank were bringing. So again, we got stalled. And then the idea of the Lagos Museum project, on the one hand, and then the J.K. Randall Center for Yoruba Culture and History, you know, um, uh, came about. For the Lagos Museum project, the design is ready. A land has been allocated within the space that we call the Lagos uh, uh, Oniko Marina Arts District, mm -hmm. which is just beside the National Museum. almost opposite National oh, Museum, yeah. but beside the, the, the Presidential Lodge, mm -hmm. which thankfully President Muhammadu Buhari okay. released you know, to Lagos State to turn into Lagos History Center to make, to create an art hub, you know, around that district. So you have a land ready. You now have a $600,000 uh, facility funding grant, actually, from Ford Foundation to design a world-class museum for the Lagos Museum, which will take another two, three <coughs> years. But again, while we're waiting for that, another idea cropped up which is now at 85% completion. The JK uh, Randall Center for Yoruba Culture, you know, is almost ready. And guess what? The British Museum is already interested in that project. And on account of the beauty of what is coming up at JK Randall uh, Center, the British Museum has now agreed to return about 20 um, artifacts that were taken out of Nigeria, uh, including the Landa Stool, which was probably one of the very first taken out of Nigeria uh, in the 18th century because they now know that uh, a world-class facility that will be maintained, that will uh, resemble anything that you will see anywhere you know, in the world is coming. We won't be able to deliver on that one, but we believe that the incoming administration will deliver on it, more so that it has gained so much international attention from the British Museum, from the French you know, Museum, which is trying to partner with us you know, all over. So yes, there were considerations for uh, <coughs> the federal facilities that, were, that are in Lagos. Uh, we were not able to make sufficient headways, but rather than uh, Bellier can appear frustrated, we turn around, apply resources. Now you have only Stadium almost <coughs> ready. You have four theaters you know, that are ready and now about to run. And then you have the J.K. Randall Center that is almost ready, and the Lagos Museum project that is taking off. That's a lot to keep any, any visitor to, to, to become a tourist like you want. <laughs> but which would you say are the top destinations in Lagos for any tourists coming? I will go for Badagri, but, but Badagri to start with. Yeah, because it takes you out of the hustle and bustle. Um, everything about slave, you know, uh, trade, history, you know, everything about it you will find in Badagri. Every first, first, you know, uh, 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 building. building, you know, a story building, a first primary school, you know, etc. And all the beaches there, wow, you know, uh, coconut beaches, etc. Badagri is key. But Ekpe has also developed into something fantastic. I mean, it's like the jewel that we've always been waiting for. Uh, the Jubilee Chalet in Ekpe now, you'll be, you'll be wow that is this in Ekpe. I mean, in January, of 2018, February, when we had uh, the Lagos Cano Investment Summit there, mm -hmm. and the vice president was there, Cano State Government, and they were <coughs> like, you know, people thought that Ekpe used to be that old rustic town that was unmotorable, etc. But it's now <coughs> turned around. It's now like, um, like, like a holiday destination. It's the getaway place that you can go. And of course, you know, you're lucky. You're... Don't also forget that um, entertainment and cultural tourism mm -hmm. drives the ecosystem in Lagos. So it's not just about going, you know, to see things. It's about wherever you are, things come to you, particularly entertainment, you know, and culture. Before you go, <laughs> Honorable Commissioner, I must ask you this. With all you have seen in government, your association with Sakim Omiambode, mm -hmm. will you say it was a mistake that the APC did not give him a second term ticket? We shouldn't sound um, um, 
regretful. Um, everything for me, personal disposition to life, um, everything works for good. Uh, sometimes um, life does not run on a straight curve most of the time. Um, and you do not know what is at the end of the turning. You know, you're just looking at the hodu, um, in quote, you know, um, midway. Uh, <coughs> I, I, I do not think that we should apportion blames. Uh, I think that if uh, there, were, um, there were errors or anything close to that, I believe that lessons have been learned. And I believe that because um, every player within APC in Lagos State, you know, is keen about development, is keen about, you know, having a, you know, a familial approach to issues. Uh, I think we should overlook um, anything that might look uh, slightly untoward uh, and focus on the big picture, which is to get Lagos, you know, uh, uh, ever working, to make Lagos to continue to be number one state, uh, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa. This is the fifth largest economy. And I think we should just be grateful that Governor Akimi Ambodi has had four years to contribute to the development and growth of that state. Thank you, Steve. Are you all in there?